the life and works of, of John Tyndall. And to provide you with some examples, there was magnetism and diamagnetism. He worked on the absorption of uh, infrared gases by the atmosphere, which is the origin of the global warming, to show you could bend light down a falling stream of water. He worked on how to get optically pure air and germs and Tyndall scattering, for example, why your eye is blue. That's Professor Paul Hurley from UCC telling us about the work of Irish scientist John Tyndall. Why are we playing it? Because he might come up on the physics exam. And Kieran Mills, teacher of physics and applied maths at Grinds360, is here to talk us through this paper. Kieran, let's begin with the format and duration of this exam. A three-hour paper, Maura. Um, two sections. Section A, which is the experimental section, and these are all the que- these are all the experiments that you'd be doing in the lab. They're called uh, the mandatory experiments. So there's 25 of those. And then section B uh, is the theory section. It's probably about one third section A, uh, two thirds section B. I always tell students, start with section A because it's easier. And there's no need to read the rest of the paper uh, because A and B are mutually exclusive. So just get stuck into section A. You've got your 25 experiments. You've got quite a nice choice. You're going to do three out of five. Um, I have some tips for you. Will I give you some tips? Please, fire away. Um, I'm always reluctant to give tips, of course, <laughs> um, because this is going to be on record and they can come back and get you later on. But just looking at the trends, and of course, I always say to students, they can make up their own tips. Mm. Um, what, what do teachers actually do? We just look for trends over the last number of years. We don't do anything magical. We certainly have no uh, inside information, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I would say uh, the big experiments that keep coming up and haven't come up for maybe two or three years, that's what I'd be picking. So I'm going to pick Snell's Law. I'm going to pick Joule's Law. I'm going to pick Conservation of Momentum. And I'm going to pick uh, a sonometer experiment involving length, frequency versus length. Okay. Um, if I get two of them, I'll be happy. Okay. And then in this section, Section A, you have to do an awful lot of drawing, let's say, drawing diagrams. What's the approach here to yeah, get top marks? Uh, there shouldn't be any. This is, this is a much easier section, much more predictable. So in terms of studying for it, uh, there's essentials you need before you go into the exam. Don't go into the exam without these essentials. So I need to know a label diagram of every single experiment. I need just read through the experiment. You're never going to have to write out the experiment, but they might ask you certain details about it. So just read the experiment a number of times. And this is really essential. You have to know the suitable graph. And what I mean by the suitable graph is what goes on each axis. You'll get a table of results and you have to know, do I square it? Do I get the square root of something? That's essential. And then know what the graph will look like. And then know a few experimental details like errors and precautions. How can you make your experiment a little bit better? They are the essentials. A lot of the stuff after that, you can wing it because you've done the experiment in the lab. So a lot of it would be common sense as to uh, how you will answer the question. And what's the best way to study for these experiments? Well, I would just... I tell students, there's 25 experiments. You can do this in one weekend. Get a number of flashcards or index cards and just put on those index cards exactly what I said. Your label diagram, a very simple diagram. I don't want any fancy art, (laughs) three-dimensional Picasso kind of art. I just want a nice, simple uh, diagram that you can literally do in about 30 seconds. Um, Sketch your graph, write down the formula and where it might be in your table book. And then three experimental details. Do that for all... 25 experiments and you will have covered, believe it or not, you will have covered 90% of what they're going to ask. Okay, so section A is, you say, the easy section. Then section B, there's more marks going here. So what can students expect here? So section B, yes, harder. So after one hour maximum, I'm finished section A. So I should be nice and relaxed now. Mm -hmm. I'm moving into section B. Um, It's the theory section. I tell every student to do the very first question. You can, do any, you can do any five questions out of nine. Um, I tell them to do the very first question. It's question number six. It's a mixture of short questions, uh, seven marks each. I tell them to write down all 12 parts with two or three lines between them and just gradually fill that in throughout the exam. So you don't even feel like you're doing uh, an exam question. You keep on coming back to it after you finish a question. And it's a great way of jogging your memory of other parts of the course. So that's one question now out of the way. So definitely do that question. I'd also do the very last question, question 14. Um, I've said this before. There, you, 
you're going to do two out of four parts and they're half questions. And because they're half questions, they can't ask you anything too detailed. They can't ask you a very complicated circuit or very difficult calculation. So it's a nice, two nice questions to do. The very first question in section B, question six, and the very last question, question 14. And then you're left with three after that to do. Okay. And there's a broad syllabus here there. I think there's 50 experiments here. Um, there will be 25 mandatory experiments. Okay. And then when you get into section B, you have these things called demonstration experiments. Yeah. I counted them recently. I, I always said there was about 50 of them, but there's 42 of them. Okay. And um, you could be asked three or four of them and they're worth a lot of marks. So you've got to cover them very, very well. Um, you have to put in your three headings, apparatus, method and observation. Do that very clearly. Um, again, nice diagram. Write in your apparatus, write in your method. You don't have to write down one, two, three, four, five. You're literally going to be putting in one or two sentences for your method and your observation. Maybe a conclusion, but the conclusion is probably what they already asked you to do anyway. And they'll give three, three and three for uh, each of those parts. So demo experiments, I would suggest probably the hardest part to learn for section B. I, I, break, I always break the course more into the mundane the mm. boring, the rote learning, These the definitions, <laughs> and the intelligent, which yeah. I like, uh, mm. where I can use my calculator, I can show off a little bit. And the course is about 50-50. Yeah. And, you know, you get a lot of intelligent students who say, I, don't, I couldn't be bothered doing the mundane, but they won't get their H1, unfortunately. Yeah. You can get to college. When you get to college, you can worry about the intelligent. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we have to get through. We have to get through yeah. this. That's the way it is. Uh, so the demo experiments are the mundane. Yeah. And they're a pain. These are the ones that you have to yeah, do Yeah, there's about 42 for. of them and you've got to learn them really well. Yeah. And uh, as I said, they ask, you know, I'd say on any paper, there will be three, four, five of them in any particular year. OK, so doing the intelligent questions, okay. uh, you know, the ones where you have to work out calculations. Should you work a theorem or calculation into a prose answer if you need to? Right, that's a kind of a deep kind of question, Maura. OK. Um, <laughs> no, I... I I don't know where that comes from. Um, okay. Um, we have a table book now, of course. Yeah. And it's a fantastic resource. I mean, that table book has been there, I think, maybe 12 years. And uh, before that, students had to learn off their uh, formulae, which was crazy. Mm. Um, so now it's legal cogging, if you like. You have a resource book that would be worth probably 20% of the marks if you use it properly. Okay. So when I do a calculation, literally... Go to your table book, write down the relevant formula. They'll give you three marks every time you write down a relevant formula. So write it down, throw the numbers in. The mathematics isn't that difficult. Yeah. A good ordinary level math student would be able to cope with these calculations. Use your calculator. Every student will be able to use their calculator and set it out like that. OK. What is the timing for each section? How long would you be spending? So you've got to do three experimental questions uh, from section A. Mm -hmm. So maximum 20 minutes per question. That'll give you an hour. Uh, you'll probably get it done in about 15. Uh, if you're finished after 45, move on. Don't say I'm going to do an extra question at that point. You'll do that at the very end. And then you're moving in then into section B. So after one hour, you've done your section A. And as I said, you're feeling good about yourself because it's not that difficult. You're drawing diagrams, you're drawing graphs. Students have been drawing graphs since they were in first year, primary school or whatever. So... Um, once they know the suitable graph, of course. And then when, when they move into section B, I would say 20 to 25 minutes. That sounds a bit lax the way I said that, but, you know, questions can vary. Mm. So I would say it should normally take you 20 minutes max, but if you need 25, take that. Probably less time to look over your paper at the very end. Okay, thank you for that.